Mike's uh, just going to introduce Dr. Unger, so uh, I'm very pleased to uh, introduce to you today the new um, acting leader of our chronic fatigue group at the Center for Disease Control, Dr. Elizabeth Unger. Uh, Dr. Unger has been at CDC for about 13 years. She is a, um, uh, an MD <clears throat> and a PhD researcher of international reputation and is bringing a wealth of experience uh, to this position. And I think you will uh, find that she is an extremely capable professional. You'll find for the committee, you'll find her um, biography on, uh, I think, in tab three of your notebook. And uh, she is uh, now uh, in the chronic uh, viral disease branch as acting branch chief of a newly named division. We, as you may know, CDC has been reorganized again. And um, this division is called the uh, Division of High Consequence Pathogens and pathology. And by high consequence pathogens, that means um, this is a division that's responsible for Marburg, Ebola, uh, smallpox, rabies, anthrax, all of the really high consequence diseases. And we have a, uh, a very capable pathology group that uh, does some wonderful work too. So uh, please uh, welcome Dr. Unger as uh, she introduces um, the uh, program for herself now. Beth? Uh, thank you very much for inviting me to attend this meeting of the CFS Advisory Committee. I'm looking forward to learning about the work of this committee as you welcome new members and de deliberate on the uh, renewal of your charter. These brief remarks provide the opportunity for me to introduce myself as the acting chief of the chronic viral diseases branch and to assure the committee that CDC's chronic fatigue syndrome public health research program is moving forward. The next slide. Um, the first item to share is about our upcoming move to new space. CDC is completing another phase in the long range plans to improve its facilities. The newest and largest building on the Royal Ball campus on Clifton Road, Building 23, has been completed and is ready for occupancy. The chronic viral diseases branch laboratories, both CFS and human papillomavirus, will be moving to this facility in mid-June. We are looking forward to continuing our work in a significantly enhanced environment. The epidemiology components of our branch will be moving into office space in Building 24, which is scheduled for uh, completion in 2011. Next slide. Um, the CFS program is committed to publishing our findings in the peer-reviewed literature. Since the last meeting of the CFS Advisory Committee in November 2009, nine publications have appeared in print or in e-publication ahead of print. I've, I selected three to illustrate how publications relate to the public health mission of the program and to the concerns of the CFS community. The first study found that participants with CFS were twice as likely as healthy controls to have metabolic syndrome. And among those with CFS, the number of metabolic factors correlated with increasing severity of fatigue. Metabolic syndrome is correlated with, in, with um, cardiovascular disease and type 2 diabetes. And this study emphasizes the need to evaluate and manage metabolic syndrome in those patients with CFS. The second study uh, presents survey data collected from convenience and probability samples. Um, yes, <laughs> useful, and yet will be publicly accessible. Um, and we will be moving um, towards that. That's uh, um, in order to do it right. It is a commitment of resources, and so it, it'll be um, probably too slow for everybody's um, interest. But we're doing it judiciously, and we are um, moving forward in that aspect. And then the other question. Um, we, we believe that this next series of um, data that, that we're exploring will direct us to how to, 
what are the most promising areas, and we uh, fully intend to reach out to the academic community to support us and expand our work. Um, it is indeed a multidisciplinary problem, and we do not have all of the experts within our own community, and we need to reach out to experts to help us move the uh, program forward. Dr. Unger, Dr. Unger, one issue that's come up at numerous times in front of this committee and is of concern to some of us researchers and, and quite a large percentage of the patient population is the empirical definition used by the CDC. W would you care to comment on that? Yes. Um, and um, well, uh, believe me, that's one of the things top on our list is to uh, to address this because largely I think it's, a, it's a, uh, our failure to communicate exactly how uh, we use this definition. It is a, uh, it should not, in my opinion, have been called an empirical definition as it is indeed the same uh, definition, the 1994 International Research Case Definition. Um, as we try to um, operationalize it so that um, a, the diagnostic criteria could be uh, more objectively applied. Um, we made some decisions that need to be validated and need to be uh, fully shown to, to the community at large. And indeed, the data from the follow-up study of the surveillance population in Georgia that is our first um, topic of concern to, to actually present various um, permutations and selections of cutoff criteria and how it will affect the patient population that would or would not be classified as CFS. Once we have that completed, I think it will be clear whether indeed a full meeting is needed um, to, to more carefully debate um, issues relating to case definition or whether um, our time together in a conference would be better devoted to other, other areas of urgency related to CFS.